brother Will not have come to church, would you? Bring him on to church, would you? And uh, let's enjoy Christmas service uh, Wednesday evening as, as well. And so today is our Christmas program. Uh, we had had all intentions this evening of taking the children out to look at Christmas lights, but the forecast is showing uh, rain, flesh, they're showing rain all day today and into the evening. Um, two reasons that I don't want to, to, to continue our plans is, uh, number one, we don't know if when we get there if the people will have their lights on or not because of the rain. And then number two, uh, I don't want to uh, take any chances of the safety of having a bus full of kids on, on wet roads this evening. So we're going to uh, pass on that. Uh, we do apologize uh, for that, but uh, I want to err on that side of safety uh, for that. So we will not be taking uh, the kids this evening to look at uh, Christmas lights. This will be our only service today. We have made plans for that this evening. I'm not able to do that. But don't forget, uh, next weekend, it's a full, full weekend uh, as well, leading up to the new year. Um, we will have our uh, nursing home, or student, our retirement home ministry next Sunday afternoon. At, uh, it's been over, we do it every fifth week. I believe it's 2 o'clock. Am I correct on that? 2 o'clock that uh, we meet there at... Uh, Canterfields will join us next Sunday afternoon for that. I do not have a cottage prayer meeting uh, scheduled for this, this time around, so we'll have evening service next Sunday. So we will be here next Sunday evening at 5 p.m. Uh, we didn't have a cottage prayer meeting scheduled. We had around the holidays. It made it a bit tough to do that, and so we will not have that. But we will be here Christmas, or excuse me, New Year's Eve, uh, 8 o'clock. We'll be in the fellowship hall. We're going to have a game night. And uh, it's just a time of fellowship together. And then we'll come over here just before midnight and pray in the new year together. So uh, we've got a brand new year coming, 20, 2020. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. I've got a theme the Lord's laid upon my heart for 2020. Excited about what the Lord is going to do. We're still in the year of revelation. I believe the Lord is going to give revelation. I believe the Lord will even give revelation uh, in this program this morning. The sister uh, Donna Kay has put together this program. And as she's done that and, and began to read it and begin to be here for the practices, uh, it is a revelation that the Lord wants to give to us today through this program even this morning. So we're excited about that. Looking forward to that for just a few moments. Once again, good to have all of you with us. Brother Kevin's filled a pew this morning. He's got his son. Uh, Noah's son is David. And his uh, girlfriend there, Crystal, and Nate, and then uh, Kenley and Kyle. So good to have each one of them with us this morning. We're glad they're here today. And it is good to see each of you in, in the house of the Lord today. Sister Mary's uh, daughter is with us as well. The young man with her, good to have them with us. And uh, we're just excited about what God is going to do in this service today. I believe there's a great message to be received in this program uh, that we're going to have today. And uh, just open your hearts to it. Uh, everybody's worked hard. And uh, we're looking forward to what God has in store for us today. Before we get into our program, we do want to receive our tithes and our offering today as our ushers will come. I told you, came to me and said, no, I've got something the Lord laid upon my heart uh, for a Christmas program. So Sister Donna Kay is going to come at this time and they're going to present to you the Christmas gift. Sister Donna Kay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all wake up. <laughs> Um, I just want to say I hope you en I hope you enjoy the program. It's not a long program. It's not a really big program, but it's got a very good message to it. A message that our pastor has been preaching on for a while now. A message that some of our Sunday school lessons have been on. God is good to us. Amen. I don't think there's not a person in here this morning because you're here. Can't say that God isn't good to you. So that we're going to proceed on. Hope you enjoy. At this point in time, Conrad is busy getting his house ready. <coughs> Thank you. 
the program for the day. I know there's a box of Christmas and some stuff out of your decoration somewhere. Let's see, it's not hanging that shelf. Oh, what's this? This is a big wooden book. Let me move this box out of the way.
think that might help too. They're not new, they're not name brand, but hey, it's all <laughs> Would you like something to drink? I sure would. Let me get you some tea. No, we don't drink my mouth punch. I drank that last night. That's all right. I'll take some tea, though. Would you care for some cookies to go with that tea? Yes, sir, I would. I like some cookies. Yeah. They fit? This looks just your size, actually. Oh, ooh, it, it used to be my brother's. I don't remember him being that large, though. <laughs> woo -wee. This is good. How is that? Good. Oh, thank you, sir. Bite, Most definitely. And I have, uh, just a second here. Let me see what I have in the box. <laughs> Yes, I'm expecting a special guest today. <laughs> There's your bag lunch to take with you. Yeah, I had a dream last night that I was going to be visited by the Lord. He was going to be my Christmas guest. You think he's cookies, are they? I'm sorry, I've got plenty. Very well, Stay warm. I'm gonna try. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Woo! Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Thank you. 
did my best. I tried to remember that. It looks very nice. I hope it's I think you'll like it. So, you collected with me, but you like it. Yes, that would be nice. You're very welcome. You have a very Merry Christmas. You too, and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas with your family. You too. Bye now. Goodbye.
Dear Lord, what did you delay? What kept you from coming today? I wanted so much your face to see. Lift up your head, for I kept my word. Three times my shadow crossed your floor. Three times I came to your lonely door. I was the beggar with bruised cold feet. I was the woman you gave something to eat. 
I was the child lost on the street. Three times I knocked. Three times I came in. And each time I found the warmth of a friend. Of all the gifts, love is the best. Conrad, I was honored to be your Christmas gift. shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Let us be 
showing the love of Christ. If we're claiming Christ and we're wearing the hat that says Christian, the pen that says Christian, let's show that Christian love to everyone we meet. I love everybody. Merry Christmas. We appreciate you so much. Appreciate the effort each one of you has put into this program today. Just an case man. Appreciate you so much. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Sister, sister, my wife, sister Amy. Now her and Noah came in the other day after being gone all day. She was sick all last week, so she had to get that Christmas shopping done. And Noah informed me that she's done. So that informed me that my checking account is probably done too. And so we're so near Christmas. We're so close to Christmas. When's going to be Christmas Day? And you may say, I, I was joking with the church a few weeks ago, so don't expect anything from me because I can't buy all of you Christmas. And so we get exhausted in, in those means to try to give and try to find the perfect Christmas gift. And we talked about that last Sunday, is looking for that perfect gift. We've been given the greatest gift of all, and that's Christ. And I found out something over the years, Sister Donna Kay, it does not cost a dime. It does not cost a penny. It does not cost anything to be kind. To be kind. To hold the door open for someone. To, to just uh, give a smile to someone who may have that stone cold look on their face. And you can just tell they're carrying the weight of the world. <coughs> and if it's, it's found where you can do it, to give a hug. To give a handshake. Now how do you do it? A Merry Christmas. You don't realize how far that goes in this season. We think about the tinsel and the lights and the Christmas decorations and the Christmas cheer and the Christmas joy. But that's not what everybody has this time of year. People are hurting. People are empty. As Conrad was hanging his decorations, he was recalling Christmas past when better memories, trying to do his best just to, to make it through another Christmas. With that hope that Jesus was going to come by his house that day. And he seemed disappointed as the day progressed, didn't he? But he didn't realize, his sister Conakay said, that the Lord came in so many forms. And he, he closed out by realizing it was right there in the Word of God the whole time. In Matthew 25, verse 40, he read it. I want to read that, that piece of Scripture this morning in its entirety. Because... This is what the Lord said. In my Bible, even on my iPad, it's written in red. <coughs> and if you have a Bible, and you open it up, and the red letters of Jesus, the letters of Jesus are in red, they're going to be read in your Bible too. Jesus said, Before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, and the shepherd, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. <coughs> then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave you drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And his comrade found this verse after the Lord spoke to him in our program. The king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. But there's another side of that story. 
Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away with everlasting punishment for the righteous into life eternal. Different ones appeared at Conrad's doorstep in our program, different knocks at his door, and each time that happened, he had a choice to make, didn't he? Each one of us, we have those moments in our life that we have a choice to make. Be kind or not be kind. Take care of the less fortunate or look the other way. And this verse, these verses of Scripture show us so well, so well what the Lord expects out of us. And my goal and my desire as a pastor is to see people grow in the grace of the Lord. And to make disciples out of all men, women, boys and girls. But my task is not complete when a person comes to the altar and gives their heart to the Lord. That's when my task as a pastor really begins. Because it's up to me to instruct you. It's up to me to teach you to love others. And how? How can a pastor teach you to love others? I choose to do it by example. I choose to do it by example. And so, between now and Christmas, and after Christmas, and into the new year, I'm going to be that kind smile. I'm going to be that generous gift if I have it. I'm going to be that one that holds open the door. Hey, I'm going to be the one that pays for somebody's lunch or breakfast behind me in the drive-thru at McDonald's or wherever that I'm through, as long as it's not a van. Right? <laughs> We're going to do everything we can to show kindness to someone else. So my challenge to you this, this few days before Christmas is, is not go out and buy everybody in your neighborhood a Christmas gift, but when you do see them, be kind. Take time to stop and speak. In our neighborhood, we have a lot of elders that, that walk their dogs down the street. And I found out last year what it means just to stop and take a moment and speak to them. I have, I have a neighbor. She never, never gets to come out of her house very much. And she's found Facebook, though. Know? And she's found Amy and me on Facebook. And she sends me messages. I never get to speak to Miss Gloria that much because she's either in the house or in the hospital. But David, her husband, is out walking his dog and we get to speak to them and be able to do different things throughout the year to show them some kindness. It's not much, but it goes a long way. And because of that, every time Miss Gloria goes into the hospital, she sends me an email and says, Pastor Wyatt, I'm in the hospital. I just need you to pray for me. We love you and your family. That goes a long way, church. It didn't cost me anything. It didn't cost me a dime. It didn't cost anything to do that. So if I can challenge us with anything this morning, let's take the message of this program that Sister Donna Kay felt heavy upon her heart to say, I know we're going to take a break this year, but in this year of revelation, I feel like somebody needs this revelation. I feel like somebody needs to be reminded to show kindness to everyone. Now we understand that Jesus wouldn't take the cookies and put them in his pocket on his way out the door. So the oldest God was not Jesus, but he said, as much as you've done it unto the least of one of these, you've done it unto me. They might not be holy, they might not be righteous, they may not be uh, what you think they are. You may smell alcohol on them, uh, you may smell the things of this world upon them, but you know what? That does not make us push them away. That makes us shine to them. We are the light of the world. And how will the world receive salt if we've lost our Savior? How will it be salt if we've lost it? 
Let's don't lose it, church. Let's not let bitterness, let, let, let's not let life circumstances, life struggles. I've told somebody before they wanted to begin, Sister Debbie, to give me sob stories of how bad life is. And, and I wanted to take them and say, why don't you just sit right now there and we can compare sob stories. Because I guarantee you, I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody with those sob stories of, of things that's gone wrong. But you understand something, that life... Waste away. Life, you know, James said it's like a vapor. Here today, gone tomorrow. And the time that I spend in bitterness, the time that I fear uh, and, and get in all of those places, it withdraws me from doing what God has called me to do. Uh, Sister Diane sung a song a few weeks ago and, uh, and, and made mention of that song. But sometimes we get in those places, but the prayer of that song that she sung was, Lord, don't let me stay here very long. Our heart breaks. I feel the preacher this morning. I'm sorry. Our hearts break and we struggle and we go through trials and we go through hardships. And everything that we've lost and everything that we've gone through in the past, the holidays seem to magnify that. We re remember our brokenness and our hurt. And if we're not careful, we'll, we'll fall up in a corner somewhere and miss what God would have us to do. But I, I just challenge you this morning, though your heart may be breaking and though you may be grieving, I guarantee you there's no one in this room grieving as much or not more than your pastor is during this holiday season. Uh, my mom's birthday would have been December uh, 17th and then Christmas. Uh, and, and so that's a hard time of year for me. Uh, and, and I could choose to say, uh, listen, I'm just going to get somebody to fill in uh, at the church during the holiday season. For years, Sister Donna Kay, uh, I refuse to do anything on Mother's Day. Uh, I've had different ones uh, do the Mother's Day services because I just couldn't do it. Uh, but there came the Mother's Day that I finally had to say, no, I'm standing, stepping in that pool and sharing the Word of God because that's what He's called me to do. Don't let bitterness, don't let heartache, don't let struggle, don't let life's uh, opposition uh, cause you to pull away. Uh, but let it begin to understand something uh, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. And we can walk in victory. We are made more than conquerors through Jesus Christ our Lord. So as we leave here this morning, let's be kind. I don't know how to be kind. I don't know what to do. What can I do to show some kindness as, as we prepare to leave here today? Well, this platform's got to get back together. That would be kind of you to help us with that, right? So to there, there's, there, you can start before you even leave here today. But there's so many things that you can do. So many things that, that can be said. So many things that can be done that won't cost you anything. But it will mean the world to somebody. Thank God for His love and His mercy and His grace. And I'm thankful for the joy that we have in our hearts in this Christmas season. And I just want to invite anyone that may be here this morning who does not know this joy, does not understand what Conrad was talking about, that the Lord spoke to him. He's still speaking to hearts today. And through this program, through this service today, you felt the Lord knock at your door. You felt a tug at your heart saying, you need to come unto me. You need to surrender your life to me. You need to, to give yourself to me and I'll be your Savior. Maybe you're here today and you've walked away from the Lord and, and this, this, this service today is a reminder of what you've gone away from and you, you, you miss it. You've tried to find your way back and the devil uh, seems to be holding on to your belt and keeping you, pulling you back. It's time for you to say this morning, I want to be released from the strongholds of the world itself and the enemy and I want to run to Jesus. I want to give my life back to Him. And I want to step into a new year serving Him and living for Him. I want to invite you to pray with me this morning as we all stand all over this house. <coughs> Maybe you're here today and said, Brother Jamie, I'm, I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. I'm thankful for that this morning. But maybe you need the Lord to just give you some creative ways to be kind to someone in the days ahead. Lord, give me revelation on how I can be better and do better in serving others. Will you pray with me this morning? If you're a sinner, just pray that sinner's prayer with me today. If you're a backslider, you know how to pray your way back. Pray this prayer with me today. If you're here today and you're saying, Lord, I just need revelation. Show me ways to minister to others. You pray as well. Father, we're grateful to you today. Thankful for your blessings. If you're here today and you're, you're lost or you're back, so pray this prayer with me. Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner. I recognize how far away from you I am. 
And Lord, I repent. I turn from that. And I give you my life. And I pray, Lord, take full control of my life. Use me for your glory as I take an about face from my sin and pledge to walk with you the rest of my life from this day forward. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father, help each one of us to be kind to others. Give us creative ways, creative thoughts, creative ideas. And Lord, just help us to go back to the simple things of just a smile, a handshake, a hug. Whatever you lay upon our hearts to do, let us do it. Whoever you bring across our path to be a blessing to, help us to be that blessing. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We've got a few things that we want to do this morning. Remember immediately, immediately following our dismissal, the junior high class, we're in the junior high class, just go straight.